further on our discussion on feature hierarchy, uh, let me explain you some of those major um, uh, features which are used as the principles for hierarchy. And remember that these are the uh, features which do play their role um, in linguistic phonetics, right? And linguistic phonetics is basically the phonetics of the community, right? Not the individual one, right? So in order to uh, describe the uh, feature uh, and then the agreement of the community on a specific feature, the hierarchy is established. And the hierarchy is basically uh, describing the major phonetic uh, dimension which is covered, right? Like one specific community is uh, producing a specific sound, right? And that's the dimension of their sound system which is covered in the feature hierarchy, right? And then their sounds, the sounds of that uh, language system, the sound system, that uh, is given in the feature hierarchy of uh, that society, that community, basically, right? So, uh, in order to describe the features of the place of articulation, there are various uh, terms which must be known to you, uh, although we might uh, uh, have been using them in this course, but I'm going to briefly uh, just cover them, right? So one is a labial, when the sound is produced from the lips, then the second one is coronal, coronal when the tip uh, and the blade of the tongue both are used, right? And then dorsal, when the beak and the roots, right? Like the beak part of the tongue is used, right? And then glottal, when the glottis is used, right? So that's the, you know, the a feature in which the glottis is involved, right? And the last one is the radical. Radical when the pharyngeal and the epiglottal, they are also active, right? So that's the very brief discussion on the places of articulation. And let me take you to the places of articulation in, within this uh, feature hierarchy. So this is the figure which shows us the place of articulation and the feature hierarchy on the basis of the place of articulation, right? So this is the feature of place, which is here. And it's given in your book in 11th chapter. There are various uh, types of these hierarchies which are given there. You can explore it from there. So labial, that a lip is involved. So within labial, whether it is this uh, bilabial or labiodental, right? In bilabial, both of the lips are involved, the upper and the lower. And labiodental, only the lower lip is involved with the upper teeth, right? Then the coronal feature, the coronal feature is that tip and blade, both of the tongue are used, right? So within coronal, there are possibilities. There are various features like dental, when the tongue is touching or moving uh, through the teeth, then alveolar, alveolar ridge is touched by either your tip or blade, and then palato alveolar, and then retroflex. Retroflex, it's the feature of the, you know, the action of tongue, right? So the third place is possible in terms of the dorsal, when the dorsum part of the tongue is used, right? The back of the tongue, it is used, and within dorsal, the features available are that whether the sound is palatal, so it is related to palate, then wheeler, like in k and g sounds, and then ayular, like the k sound, k, the Arabic k, right? So these are the features within dorsal, and then within radical, when the pharyngeal and the epiglottal, you know, these parts are activated. So the, within radical features, the place of radical, we have pharyngeal as well as epiglottal, right? Pharyngeal is basically the iron sound of uh, Arabic language. So that's the feature which is uh, maintained by the pharyngeal feature. And then glottal, that whether the position of a glottis is involved actively in this uh, sound in addition to phonation. Of course, phonation is always there by default. But glottal is when the sound is created through the glottal. And the example is the h, the English her, her sound, right? So that's a fricative which is created with the help of the glottis and it's the glottal feature which is there in this, right? Then we can further divide these places into subparts. And the example is that coronal can also be divided into further specification. And let me take you to that division also, right? So coronal is a place of articulation, is divided into 
three subgroups, sub features. One is laminal, right? And you know that within laminal, the blade of the tongue is used, right? So that's the difference between laminal and apical. In apical, tip of the tongue is used, and in laminal, blade of the tongue is used, right? So within laminal, there are possibilities lingolabial, interdental, right? Interdental when your tongue is within, you know, upper and lower teeth. Then laminal dental, laminal alveolar, laminal uh, post alveolar, which is also called palato alveolar. Apical, apical dental, apical alveolar, apical post alveolar. And sub apical is basically the feature in which from the under space of the, you know, the uh, tip of the tongue is used. And the very good example is the retroflex sound, right? Retroflex is the l sound, l, right? The l in Urdu, Punjabi, and other uh, Pakistani regional languages. So this is the description of uh, coronal feature and its uh, sub-description, subdivision, and it is done on the basis of the uh, place features taken from a specific uh, speech community.